All right. All right, this is Strip, and we're here with Cassandra Jane. Hello. Now, if, if you've noticed, we're not in a club because it's quiet. Yeah, and it's comfortable, <laughs> and it doesn't smell. Courtesy of the Hilton Hotel. Yep. They're not paying us, but I'll, I'll put a plug. <laughs> the beds are comfy. <laughs> it, it feels comfy. It looks comfy. <laughs> and it doesn't squeak. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything about that. So what are you doing here? Um, I came here to crown the, two, the 50th um, Miss Nude World. Just last weekend. Which is who? Which is Aspen Rain. It's her sixth Miss Nude World title. Nice. So you held it last year then? Yes, I did. I certainly did. And then I also... Um, won for the second time Miss Burlesque World last night. Oh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, I'm glad I took So, I, I can tell you're not from around here. No, I'm from Australia. <laughs> I noticed that. The land down under. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm decent. I know, I know accents, but I just don't know where they all come from. So. Okay, my accent's not very broad. I don't have that bogan twangy accent. Not like that, not like those corny movies they put out in the 80s? No, nothing like that. I think I, sp I try and speak properly because originally I was from Tasmania and that's like... Well, that's like the little island off to the side. That's where the, de the devil comes from, right? Yes, that's correct. But I hear it's beautiful there. It's very beautiful, but it's very slow and they talk very slow and their accents, they kind of... Yeah, it's, I, I couldn't even try and do it for I could probably intimidate, I, I'll intimidate. Um, it's not the right word. I'm very tired, by the way. So That's okay. <laughs> I could um, probably do an American accent more. Uh, better. Right, <laughs> yeah, better That's than okay. a Tasmanian one. So, so you live in Australia and you come and compete here in the States for different titles and so forth? Yeah, uh, this is my second time this year. So what 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 made you decide to do that? I mean, how did you get into this? Um, well, when I started dancing 16 and a half years ago, I entered a little competition called Miss Nude Tasmania. You were 12 then, right? No, I was 21. <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't have to say that. I don't care. I'm 37 and I'm proud. I don't look a day old. High five. 20. Me too. I'm 37. I actually got 22 the other day, so I don't Fair care. Enough. When I don't have any makeup on, I actually look even younger. Makeup makes me look old now. Do oh, they, they card you still? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> I get very flattered. And I, yeah, people always go, you're lying. You're lying. Why would I lie? Why would I say 37? If I wasn't 37, I would say I was 32. <laughs> that, there you go. But, I mean, this this is not an industry if you're not in shape and, and keep in shape and stuff, too. So. Exactly, and that's why I have to go to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I do yoga, and I eat very, very well. So, so let me ask you. So, starting in Australia, is it Australian clubs and, and that kind of thing, is, is the industry different there? Um, so yeah, how, how it is. It well, we kind of here. went off the beaten track. I didn't get onto oh, no into the yeah. competition. Yeah, yeah so I about. originally won Miss Nude Tasmania, and I entered that one first because I was originally from there, and I was the first Tasmanian to actually win it because nice. normally it was nice. Victorian contestants. Um, went on to compete in Miss Nude Australia, and I didn't even make the first cut. So yeah. I was oh, Um no. I did go by the name of Elvira back then and I had a hot pink fringe. So they didn't really like that kind of different stuff back right. then. Right. Um, and then, so I went completely blonde and I have been ever since. Um, and I came back two years after that, I won Miss Nude Victoria, came second in Miss Nude Australia. Won Miss Nude South Australia, come second in, oh. in Australia. So then I was like, nah, you know what? I'm gonna have a year off. And the year I had off, the winner couldn't go to the Worlds because the winner of Miss Nude Australia used to always go to the Worlds. Right. And um, they were like looking for someone to send because they didn't want to send the girls that competed because they didn't feel that they 
were good enough to take to the world. So they rang me. <laughs> Much to Hello. My surprise. Help us out here. <laughs> they were like, apparently you're the one to ask. And I was very flattered. Very, very flattered. So I was awarded um, Miss Nude Southern Hemisphere. And I'm still reigning Miss Nude Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's not something you can win. It's, it's an award. So um, like I was saying before, awards are almost, and I think they're actually better than winning. Winning, you get satisfaction and a relief when you've won. Right. Yep, because right. you've tried so hard. But with an award, you get the, an um, emotional attachment and it's more personal. Right. Yeah. You, can, you can't work hard to get an award. Well, you do work well, hard. you do. But, but it means that the industry that you're working for is noticing you and that you have their respect. So, yes, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, so I came over to the Worlds and competed um, in 2006 and came third and I won Entertainer of the Year. So I was pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, but since that first Miss Nude Tasmania, all I wanted to do was win Miss Nude World. <laughs> you got the bug. That I had the bug. I certainly did. And then um, when I turned 30, I, um, I had a baby. So I retired, as you would Sure, expect. sure. Yeah, that's kind of hard. You know, Miss New World is being pregnant, you know. No, Miss New Pregnant World, I don't think that. <laughs> you know, there probably is one. I don't even want to know. Don't I don't. I, there's don't websites. I know. I don't want to know. I, la, 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 la. <laughs> um, so I retired, and but I still went to the Miss New Australia's every year. It was um, something that I really enjoyed. Um, I also make all my own costumes, and I was... That's how I was living after I retired because I was making costumes oh, for the girls. Okay. So I had girls with my costumes and, or I'd been training them as well. Um, so I always went and John Monaghan, who, who owned the, um, the Miss New Australia, he's, he's dead now. But um, the last thing that he ever said to me was, Cassandra, when are you going to enter again? It hasn't been your time yet. And I was like, I'm too old. I'm not going to do that. Oh. Yeah, I could just, no. That's as if I'd win. And then that year, the girl who won, she was actually older than me. So I was like, right, oh, no. <laughs> game on. I had had my boobs done um, a couple of years before he said that. Um, and then I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'd been to so many of them. I knew what they were after. Right. I knew how to do it. It's pretty simple. It's old hat by now. <sighs> well, it took me a whole year of planning, a year of training, a year of... Um, Making my costume, the costume was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, no. The prop was ridiculous. Oh, like, it cost me 30000 all up to compete. Oh. And the prize money was twenty grand. So, actually, yeah, I didn't make it. <laughs> I don't care, because, like, I won. That's all I cared about. I wanted to win. Um, so, it was worth every cent. That's a hell of a costume. <laughs> uh, I'm probably still paying for some of them on my credit card to oh, tooth the God. truth. That yeah. doesn't matter. It's a credit card. <laughs> always, get, always gonna be there, like whatever. Um, so I came over to the world because they, did, they didn't send them to, to the world anymore. They stopped bringing this new Australia over. Um, but me, being who I am and competitive and wanting to that world crown, I was like, no, nah, I'm going over. So I came over, I competed again, came third. Um, and last year I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this again. I had my plan of attack. Uh, nearly didn't come. But then someone talked me into it. I came and I kicked butt. <laughs> nice. Literally. Um, so, yeah, that's how, that's the kind of the story. That's how you got into it. Now, you, you recently competed in, like, the Grand Prix in, yeah. in Wisconsin. And I did certainly did. And that was interesting. That was the first time they'd ever held that. Um, and the concept of it was bringing all the different genres of adult entertainment. Um, I don't go, go. Go-go dancing is probably not adult entertainment, but they had burlesque, they had go-go dancing, which is cheerleading, um, right. fetish, feature, and pole dancing. So all these different genres all mixed together to see who was going to be the, the world champion of, of this. Um, and lo and behold, I won. I was quite sh shocked. They... Um, they did the, the scoring after each show. They would announce what you got. Just right. like the Olympics, right. you know? <laughs> right. For a... Yeah, 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 totally. So um, you knew what you had after your show. So the first round, <clears throat> I was second last. 
knew my score. I, I was in the lead. And then the pole dancer came on. I can't remember her name. I should, but I'm really bad with names. <laughs> Sorry if you were seeing this. Um, you were amazing. And she was. She was like, I was like, what? She was doing stuff that I'd never seen before. It's whatever she was doing still hasn't hit Australia. So <laughs> she had this um, silks attached to the top with a clamp, the pole, and was doing silks and pole together. And I, oh, okay. I was pretty I, I much, pretty much damn impressed. Right. There was two girls that did it there. Yeah. <clears throat> there was a, in the princess division and then queen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, yeah, see if I could beat that. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, no. Amazing. Anyway, um, but I did. And you still not pulled out. Not by out much, though. Right. Not by much. Um, but it was also nice that the judges that were judging the competition were from within the industry. Or right. Within industries. Right. There was a pole right. dancing um, producer and burlesque and da 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 da. So they were all from different parts of the industry. So, and the stuff, the comments that they had. After my show, well, they, I'll hold them very dear for the rest of my life. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. Now, what's your style of dancing? Because we were talking about this well. a little bit ago. <laughs> well, so I have stripped for 16 and a half years. Um, when I started, I never knew what burlesque was. But all my shows had a lot of burlesque in it. I knew about Sally Rand and the fans and, mm-hmm. you know, I knew about that kind of stuff. Right. But I didn't know the word burlesque and that there was a genre and the history and all that kind of um, stuff that goes with it. So I always had a little bit of influence. Um, And when it became really popular in Australia about 10 years ago, I was kind of like, oh, what's this burlesque thing? Um, And I went and saw a show and I was like, oh, far out, I could do better than that. That was crap. (laughs) I was bored. I'm like, what? We paid to see that? Um, Never really did anything about it. Then I had a kid. Yeah. So that kind of ruined. (laughs) That's where that stopped. Um, And then I went back to working, stripping. Mm -hmm. And um, I met a burlesque producer who produced the Burlesque Ball in Australia. And um, she took me under her wing for a little while. And we were working together on a project. I had this big dream of the club that I wanted to open that was more, that was burlesque Parisian cabaret and Las Vegas cabaret mixed into the one because there's always one or the other not to get right, right. Um, yeah, so you know, your, your, your Parisian cabaret come out, their tits are already out. You right. know, there's no tees in, in Parisian or, or Las Vegas. So I wanted to do that kind of style but with tees. Um, and we worked on that for ages together, trying to find, you know, investors and all that kind of stuff. Sure. It never happened. But anyway, we ended up coming up with Miss Burlesque Australia. So we started doing that t- together um, because they didn't have a competition. They had the right. Miss Nudes, right. but there was nothing for this genre. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. So, you know, just watching the girls compete, because they all had to compete with three different shows, and there was 10 girls. So that's 30 shows every heat that I saw. Oh, wow. In every state of Australia. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I can do this. <laughs> and um, we also put on a review called Ruby Review, and we mm-hmm. also ran the Burlesque Ball, and we were putting on stuff on weekends as well. Yeah. And all the girls would come and perform, and I'd be sitting in the backstage going... Yeah, I can do this. Why aren't I on stage? Like, I can do this. I could do that. Do this. And so my Miss Nude Australia show was actually to prove to my business partner at the time that, yeah, I can do that and I can do it damn well good. Um, The show was made up, it was burlesque themed. The movie burlesque. Right, right. Not burlesque. Well, it was. I was taking the piss out of it. Because everyone knows the movie Burlesque. Sure, sure. Why not? Burlesque in it. It's no. sexy cabaret. There's one right. act that is a little bit burlesque. Yeah. Yes. But not even close. Well, my, yeah, my daughter watches it for crying out right. loud. It's, just, it's mostly singing. <laughs> it's singing yeah, that, and dancing around in sexy lingerie, not right. even vintage lingerie. Right, that's true. And they're not removing anything. That's true. That's true. There's a little bit of comedy in it, but yeah. So um, I thought, I'm going to take the piss out of this. So I um, came out to a, a traditional burlesque song, and then I did, which I did burlesque to, right. and then I put a Christina song in and stripped to. <laughs> nice. And then I put a, like, the, the, the stripper 
you know, the traditional, very traditional. I did the very cliche with the songs that everyone knows, right. burlesque songs. Right. And I did my glove removal and my corset removal. So every burlesque song that I had in it, I did. So it was Christina from the movie Burlesque, movie Burlesque, all the way through. And every burlesque song I did, I actually did proper burlesque. And no one had ever really done anything like that ever before in um, Australia. Huh. Or America when I did that too. So I had the right. tassel twirl, I had the massive ostrich feather, like boa The fans. boas, yeah. But yeah. the boa fans, not the plume ones, the huge, massive. Oh, the, the, big, the big, the big. Yeah, they were like yeah, yeah. two metres yeah. of, yeah, it was ridiculous. It cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> but worth it. Those are big birds. Yeah. <laughs> and then my, my, um, my actual boa was meters and meters and meters of ostrich ostrich boa that i made into like a secret compartment that while i was bringing it over my bottom i was actually undoing the clips and when i put shook it like that a, a sheer nighty fell fell down oh, nice. so i did a little bit of you know quick change as well very cool um, had his massive huge rocking horse carved out of wood oh. it's pro like it cost me nine thousand dollars oh my god but she's in, so <laughs> beautiful. And then I spent, all, I did all the jewels and I did all the saddle and everything myself and painted it up. Yeah, I really do. Wow. I really set the bar high. <laughs> and so now whenever I do anything new, I have right. to really... I get to check my bank. I'm it. like, fuck, <laughs> why did I do that? <laughs> you know, everyone right. expects you to now be sure. the same. So how big is burlesque in, in Australia? Is it bigger than it is here? Or? It's huge, you yeah. know. We don't have the history right. like America has, right. Right. Um, but there's burlesque bars everywhere. It's 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 really? saturated. It was bi you know it's it's had its thing. It's had its heyday. It its heyday, yeah. It is going backwards now. Everybody wants to learn how to be. You know, they, everybody does it. Wow. Every housewife goes to a school and learns burlesque, and there's just too many, and there's too much bad burlesque. This is the thing. They think they're good. They don't right. get gigs. So because they don't get gigs, they produce their own gig and people who have never seen burlesque before go to that gig thinking they're going to go see some really good burlesque and it's crap and they don't like burlesque so they don't go anymore. Right, right. Yeah. See, I mean, so here... There's genres too. Yeah, there is. Yeah, A there's, there's classic, which is what I, I do. And then there's your, your like 1960s neo and then there's your modern neo and then there's your gorlesque. Then there's a... Oh, it's just... It doesn't end. The Gaulesque? Gaulesque, yeah. They're like vampires. And yeah. Okay, okay, that's what I thought they'll, it was. They'll yeah. rip up their skirt and they've got two bits of steak on their vagina because it's just stuff that they do. It's, it's Lady Gaga started that. I mean. Yeah, yeah, the New Yorkers. It's yeah. all their fault. <laughs> well, I mean, that's they that's the thing. Each other. It's about shock. That's the thing. In, in the United States, we only have maybe four areas where burlesque is really done yeah. i mean you got chicago you got new york maybe yeah. sometimes out here in la but yeah. not most of the time yeah you know? yeah so it, it's, it's weird when you say oh this is you know it's really popular here you know yeah yeah i it, it is they have like their festivals in like nearly every town in america there's a burlesque festival yeah and, and most of it's not very good yeah <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. I haven't been. Some of the bigger cities are pretty yeah. good. You know. Well, I know a lot of the Australians travel over here right. and they right. do the rounds. Yeah. So the the New York Bellas Festival was like last week or the weekend before. Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. And New Orleans was just like three or four weekends ago. Now, see, New Orleans would be fun. Yeah. I'd like to go to that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to do all of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. It'd be fun to go see because that's a, that's a party town. That's a good yeah. place to go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't go if they accept me though. I always apply, but yeah, I don't get accepted. I don't know. I think it's because I'm a stripper as well. They're like, they don't like now, do they give you shit because because you've done both? Well, I think um, I don't know. Well, all the top burlesque performers that I know in Australia, mm -hmm. they all now strip because of me, <laughs> <laughs> because they've seen what I do and what I can afford to bring to the table the money in the downtime yeah, they're like well we need to do that too yeah. so i've done a lot for the burlesque community within australia um they've gone from pretty amateur to world class top of the range because of the competition they're pushing themselves oh yeah it keeps getting harder yeah yeah and they want that crown they sure, definitely want that sure. crown and they've watched me and they've, i've inspired them so um yeah pat on the 
that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like you said before, you don't do any pole work, really. So all of it has to be entertainment on the stage. you got to be entertaining and keep people captivated. You certainly do. And that's that's a talent in itself. If you, you know, if you can't keep a crowd of men or women, and it's harder to keep the women entertained. Yes. Especially if you're a stripper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They stand back and they judge you. They judge, even if they do like you, and you, they're still judging you. They'll they'll say she's good, but man, them shoes gotta go. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah, all oh, that she's she's oh, hot, she's but too uh, she's too skinny. <laughs> she's not eating right. <laughs> <laughs> Something I don't know, but you know, to keep a whole crowd entertained for fifteen twenty minutes, our shows sure, are long sure. back in Australia. Um, burlesque shows tend to go for five, six minutes, but I, I do eight-minute shows. I can't do five minutes. Yeah, five minutes doesn't give you a long... That, that's more like a, a stripper show out here. You know, you got you got three two-minute songs, maybe you got six minutes. Yeah, okay. My shows go for 15 minimum, normally yeah. 20 minutes. Um, well, with burlesque, you have more time to, do, to develop burlesque. a story and stuff, too. Yeah, burlesque, the shows generally go between four and six minutes. Mm -hmm. Um... That's because of the, I, I believe, it, I could be wrong, but that's because of the festivals. They get sure. so many girls now that will apply. you got to make it through the day. you got to make the <laughs> show shorter to try and fit as sure. many as they possibly sure. can. Like the Burlesque Hall of Fame, their shows have to be four minutes long. Yeah. I, I couldn't go to Burlesque Hall of Fame and, and compete or even feature because my shows, are, I can't cut them. <laughs> Like, Where do I get rid of 10 minutes? It's not just about taking off. Like, you know, most of it, they just take their clothes off and da-da. But with me, I, you know, I'm a performer and I'm going to dance. Right. Yeah, I like my bumps and my grinds and right. my old school now, now do you, dancing. <laughs> now, do you do the old school burlesque where you actually tell a story during the, during the, the set? Or? No, um, that's more Neo. Okay, yeah, okay. Neo burlesque is telling a story. See, I'm learning something. Yeah, yeah. So your old school burlesque is your classic burlesque. So that's more right. showgirl. You've got your bumps and your grinds and your shimmies and, you know, your, oh, you know, your old grandma kind of dancing, which I love. That's personally my favorite. Um, or you've got your, your Sally Rand, your fans, which is very elegant and you're hiding right, things right. and revealing a little bit and, but not too much and all that kind of jazz. Right, you're teasing slowly. Yes, yes, and tenderly. Um, and then there's your, your tassel twirl as well. So I do all that. Then there's your neo, which is before, uh, after the 1960s. Okay. Yeah, so from 1960s up, that's, that's neo burlesque. So that's either telling a story or it has parody, so it's going to make you laugh. Ah. So my latest burlesque act is both. I have actually ah, combined the okay. two. Um, it's a Carmen Miranda. Um, and it's a tribute to Josephine Bacon, Baker, Bacon. <laughs> I love Bacon. Baker and Carmen Miranda mixing together. So it's a banana show. Um, big hat? It's got the big hat with oh, the bananas. God. I come out to chick, chick, boom. Um, and then I also end up with the bananas on, you know, around. So after that, um, I have a massive blow up banana. And I sit on the blow up banana. And it's all about sexual innuendo, you sure, know. I'm, sure. Yeah, and I eat a banana. <laughs> so while I'm no more innuendo than that. Yeah, right? there's not much. The other day when I performed it at the Miss Nude Worlds, um, this guy at the front was just like his mouth was. <laughs> he was like, "No way, no way, that's so hot, no way." And I was like, I'd actually eaten quite a bit of food that night out the back. So I couldn't finish the banana because normally I finish the whole sure, banana. Sure. So I threw it to him and he ate it. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> you just ate my banana. I'm not, I'm not touching that. <laughs> but anyway, and then after that, I do a puppet show with Ernie and Bert to Manamana. <laughs> Sesame Street? Really? Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much Manamana. what we... Manamana, do 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 do. Yep, and so Ernie and Bert pretty much fight over my vagina. Nice. And it's very nice. funny. So that's the comedy aspect of that show. So that's very neo. The rest of it's. You know, you know the people say they're gay, right? 
Well, that's the thing. They are. There's like at one stage, Ernie and Bert. Ernie's going down on me, and Bert's giving it to Ernie. Oh. <laughs> oh, my mind. <laughs> you got to see. It's very, very funny. It is the show that won me Miss Nude World. It won me the G hat. G. What's the G P E D. Uh, the Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah, the Grand, Grand Prix of Exotic Dance. And it also won me Miss Burlesque World last night. Well, then I can't can criticize whatsoever. I think I got a good thing. I should just run with it for a while. You know, we'll just recycle. If people like Bert and Ernie doing it. Well, <laughs> I've, I've been doing it for like nine years now. How do you, now how do you come up with these crazy well, ideas? It wasn't my idea. It's been passed down. Um, I believe someone could change me. My, um, you know, it could be, I could be wrong. But I believe Barbie Doll Benson from America used to perform this sh particular show back in the early 90s. Okay. Yeah. She used to come to Australia to the Crazy Horse and she used to perform at the, yeah, at the Adelaide Crazy Horse and right. she would perform that show. Then Sesame Street sued her. So I'm figuring <laughs> that... It's coming. I'm... <laughs> well, it's a... <laughs> Performers' rights are a lot different now than it's parody. Yeah, yes. yeah, um, and I don't call it my Ernie and Bert show; it's my Coco Banana show. But anyway, there you go. Anyway, she was sued, so I believe it pretty much got locked in the dungeons here in America because she was sued, and no one was going to touch because no one else right. wants to get sued. Right. But in Australia, a lady called Simone Satin, she was working in this same club, and she was like, "Well, I'm going to do that," and. That particular show was the very first strip show I saw when I was 20 years old. So it stuck with you? The very... F I couldn't believe it. I was like, that is the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, so she did that for quite some time. And then when she retired, I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I should have actually asked her. Out of respect, I should sure, have asked her. Sure. I didn't. I just did it. Um, but she's retired. She's retired, yeah. But you know. You know. Anyway, so that was a very, very long time ago. So I was doing that um, pretty much every day for a very long time and it really started to hurt my neck. And um, it really pissed me off because you dance your heart out for 15 minutes and then you do the last two and a half minutes of Mana Mana at the end. And no one would ever say, oh, I really loved your dance. It'd and that's be just all like, they remember. Like, and I was like, I might as well just come out, do two and a half minutes, and then fuck off. <laughs> like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. It pissed me right off. Yeah. I'd be sweaty and, you know, because I just yeah, you're dance. You're yeah. Working. So I decided I was going to put that to rest when I retired after um, I having the kid. I was not going to do it again. But, um,. It did actually come out a few times, and I was like, oh, light bulb. <laughs> I'm going to put Rubber Ducky, which I use Rubber Ducky as a first right, song, right. and Mana together, cut out the middle, and just make it a burlesque routine. So I'd come out with my towel and towel around me, and I'd come out and I'd go, ee, ee, whenever the Rubber Ducky <laughs> would be squeaking, and then I'd do Mana Mana. And it went down like a treat. I was getting bookings, burlesque bookings everywhere just nice. for that. And people were like, oh, my God, that's the best burlesque show I've ever seen. It's so funny. See, there was an American accent. Probably. You did good. You did good. <laughs> and um, so and everyone was like at work, stripping work, my bread and butter. I was like, when are you going to do Ernie and Bert again? And I'm like, nah, if you want to see, you got to come to burlesque shows. I'm not, right. not going to do it. It's not, you know, it's too much. It's too hard. You know, you don't appreciate it. They appreciate me. All you want to see is Ernie and Bert. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going to bring it back unless I can outshine those little buggers. And I think, I don't think I actually outshine them because, you know, people are still like, oh, that's so you see Well, it's hard but to beat the punchline when that's, It is, you know. but before I bring them out, I know from watching the reaction from the right. crowd that they loved every minute of it. Right the rest of the show so that's good enough for me there you go. especially when I do all my tassel twirl it's like what the fuck is she doing oh my god she's eating a banana on a blood <laughs> banana what the hell <laughs> like I told my um my coach back in Australia because I have a coach when I'm competing so I get a second opinion um and I'm like this is what I want to do um I wanted to find a massive like 
Perspex or fiberglass banana, you know, huge big banana. And I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to find it. So I was oh Google searching, Google right. searching. And I'm like, ah, oh, a giant blow up banana on eBay. It's like eight bucks <laughs> from you England. I know. <laughs> and um, I was like, yeah, maybe that would work. It's all I'm going to be able to do. Yeah. And, you know, you have to blow it up. It's not big. It's not heavy. It's not right, going to take right, up any room in my suitcase. It's yeah. the most perfect traveling prop. And I, I said, so look, this is what I'm going to do. And she goes, I think you're just going a little bit too much. It's a bit cheesy. A bit cheesy. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. This is going to work. It's so cheesy, I was, it works, you know? I was rehearsing at my gym and right. I brought the banana blown up to the gym. It's private. Right. And I sat on it and I'm like, this is a little bit too hot to be rehearsing at the gym just in case someone walks in. Sure. And then um, I showed her and she was like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> that is so hot. <laughs> oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. That's funny. I'm like, yes. <laughs> My idea. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. Yeah. And because if you don't blow it up all the way, when you sit on it and you go, boom, it goes. <laughs> 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 so there's like heaps of sexual innuendo in this particular part of the I'm act. not saying nothing about the whoopee doo and the bananas. I'm not you doing know. anything dirty. It's no, all like whatever yeah. you make up in your own damn mind. Yeah. Well, I'm, I've, I'm obviously have dirty minds. So. <laughs> So we all. Yeah. Well, that's what keeps me in this business. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, so now that you've done all this stuff and you you kind of traveled the United States a little bit, doing some stuff around here. What do you What do you plan on doing? I'd love to come and tour. I'd love to spend summer here next year, and um, you know. It gets hot. Yeah, I'm used to it. I'm sure Australia gets hot too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or even Canada. I'd love to do Canada, but. Um, yeah, I have the, the problem of, um, I'd have to bring my daughter along with me yeah. and she doesn't have a passport. Oh, yeah. wow. So that's what's stopping me at the moment. Yeah. And you can only stay so long without a visa or something. Well, I can get a working visa. That's yeah, not, a, that go. won't be a problem, but, yeah. um, I need to get a passport so I can bring my daughter along. There yeah. Cause I ain't leaving her there. Nah. No. no. <laughs> I mean, if you got enough work here, you could do that for a while. Well, well, I've been saying no to about two bookings a week from America and I'm wow. not getting bookings in Australia. So it's really affecting me a lot. Yeah. You ever think about moving here? Um, I would never be allowed to. Her father would never allow uh, that to happen. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 That old thing. Yeah, you get, yeah. Your exes are never that yeah, far away. No, oh, no, no. Especially when you're a stripper. Oh, yeah. To America. Next oh, thing you know, he'll, he'll be watching Murray Povich looking for you. <laughs> you, know, or, you know, what's his name? All the cliche crap, you know. Yeah, it's not yeah. like that. Like, it's not like that at all. No, yeah, well, I mean, you've seen some of the, so, I mean, you've seen Christina Gucci and some of the good dancers out here. That, that, that yeah, well, I stuff. would never bring my daughter to work oh no 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 put her in that kind of environment no, no. <laughs> what do you think I no um, i don't want my daughter to be a stripper you're not a kardashian you wouldn't no. do that <laughs> definitely not a kardashian no 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 lady okay so so staying in australia then what's your plans for the future well, I've just lost a backup dancer, so um, as soon as I get back, I'm interviewing another one and hopefully get my Bring Back the Showgirl back on the road and um, try and put together another tour. So that's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. Um, Keeping yourself busy. Yeah. Yeah, I have to, or I'll go mad. Mad. <laughs> I hear. Now, um, the la when you won the, uh, I forgot about this, when you won the Grand Prix, yep. There was a thing with the money that you yeah. couldn't take the money back. No, I so explain that. Not that I couldn't take the money back. It's just I don't have a social security number or a working visa. So uh, uh, I. So you couldn't accept the money. Accept the money. So I was like, well, I'm happy to compete, not get the money. And they were like, well, if you're happy to do that, then yeah. And I was like, well, how about I give the money to a charity? 
I would really like to do that. And um, I thought, you know, the, there's the American Eagle charity mm-hmm. with Dolly Parton's part yeah. of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there was um, the chimpanzees re- re- rehabilitating. So I take it you're an animal person. I am an animal person. <laughs> It's not their fault. It's our fault that right. they're there right. in these situations. Sure. Um, cancer and all that stuff and all diseases and all that stuff, I'm human. I can get it too. But I'm all for finding out the cause and the prevention, not a sure. cure. I don't want to get it to be cured. I don't want to get it in the first right. place. Right. So unless it's putting money in to find out what's not to get it, which will never happen because, you know, everyone governments want us to be sick to make money so (laughs) we're not sick they don't make money she's from australia and she understands yep i know exactly it's all it's not a conspiracy theory no it's not true true. yeah it makes me sick so i eat organic i eat very healthy i don't really eat much processed foods um Ah. very very switched on when it comes to all that stuff so um that's actually probably the prevention it's actually probably good diet No processed sugar. You're telling me my, my Mickey D's is not doing me any good. You know what the worst thing is? Is artificial sweetener. Yeah, that, yeah. I it like sugar. It causes cancer. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And it, the thing that makes me so angry is that they have, I don't know what they're like here in, here in America, but in Australia, on the cigarette packs, there's pictures of people dead. No, they don't have that here. And feet rotting and your lips rotting off your face yes. from, from yes. throat cancer and stuff. Yes. Why the hell don't they have the same thing on diet food with all these artificial sweeteners? Because those sugars have, they've already yes. been proven that they cause cancer. Uh, yeah, we don't have that here, and and I don't think they'll. I think there's too much money. Be, there's too much money behind it. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's just like when they when they fight about uh, medical marijuana out here, yeah. and they and they try to they raid the federal government comes in and raids it and stuff. There's no money behind the marijuana people, but there's lots of money behind the pharmaceutical people to make sure it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So there's no like sugar people that are making it gonna make it no, go away. Either. No, it's just everyone's getting sick, you know, right. and everyone right. like all these obese people thinking that they're doing the right thing by eating these sugar free stuff. They're going through the drive through self cancer. I used to work in a in a restaurant years ago and, and I remember we used to have this lady come through our drive thru every day. Two giant chocolate chip cookies and a diet coke. Diet diet coke is <laughs> <laughs> than real coke. <laughs> and she was like 300 pounds of like two cookies and a Diet Coke. That ain't working, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, two two cookies and a Diet Coke. That's Just insane. get a regular Coke. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Why? Why bother? Why torture yourself? It's, yeah. not, it's not worth it. They do taste good. Though. A diet. Yeah. I don't like diet, diet anymore. I can't stand diet. Uh, I yeah. can't stand so, it. Uh, oh. Yeah. And I don't need a diet, so I figured, you know, as much as I can get, I'll take. You yeah, know? you look good. <laughs> no, I'm skinny, dude. I I need to gain some weight. But uh, so where did you end up taking the the money to? So, where did it end up? So they ended up. Um, Brian, there, he's said, look, there's there's a chariot, there's a um, an animal rescue center here in Wisconsin that maybe you might be interested in, and I'm like, okay, more information, please. It's for the big cats. Uh, straight away, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Giant like, cat's cool. I love tigers. They are my favorite. I'm a Leo, so nice. you know, the main, you know, wow. <laughs> um, so I instantly knew that yeah, that's what I wanted to do. So I contacted the Wisconsin Rescue and Educational Center for Big Cats. And um, they were like, yeah. Like, they, yeah, you know, thinking maybe they might not want to be associated with a stripping yeah. competition yeah. or an adult entertainment competition. Sure. Sure. Um, and they were all over it. So we um, went down there before the comp and I got to meet Brian, um, not Brian, I can't remember his name, so you might want to edit that bit out. Anyway, <laughs> so went down there and met them and um, he took us around to each animal. There's 17 tigers. Wow. Seven lions and four leopards. I met every single one of them and they loved him. Oh my God. They just, they had so much love for him. It was insane. I was like, oh my God, I want a kitty to love me. (laughs) And I get how people... a little dangerous. Well, I I (laughs) understand, you know, all my life I've wanted a tiger as well. But you don't get one. It's a fantasy. Right, right. It's a fantasy. Fantasies 
aren't necessarily, unless they're sexual, <laughs> some of them, not all of them, right. are supposed to happen. Yes. It's a fantasy. Yes. It's the only state left in, in America that it's not illegal to own an exotic animal like that. Really? So, basically, he's rescued these animals, some of them from cubs, some of them mm. were breeding for, right. bre- yeah, for right. breeders. They would breed, um, some of these tigers were in 1.3 metres, yeah, you that's, yards, that's not don't you? Big, yeah. yeah, diameter, cages, yeah. just popping out cubs. Yeah. That's all they were there for. And um, he rescued some of these um, lions um, and a lot of tigers from these small enclosures. And they would sell the cubs to random people with the money. Sure, sure. They don't care who sure. it goes to. It's all about money. And they would use the cubs for photos for tourists. And then when they got to a certain size, they would sell them to drug dealers. <laughs> In Wisconsin, they don't use pit bulls. They use lions and tigers. Oh my god! It That's just a, wrong. This, he he um got a phone call from the police saying, "Hey, we need you to come down. We've we've just done this bust, and there's like this tiger and lion chained oh, up in the backyard, and they're like busting in and like." <laughs> Oh it's ridiculous. God. Yeah, ridiculous. Oh, so, geez. I uh, it was very fulfilling. I very cool. So glad that I did it. I got to pat one of them, oh, and very um, cool. very yeah, cool. it was it was very very cool. Um, I have been to the Tiger Temple in um, Bangkok oh, in wow. Thailand. That was wow. ridiculous. Um, but I'm pretty sure they drug them there. I don't <laughs> like. I had this huge tiger. Its head was this big, sitting in my lap to get a photo. And oh. it just so happens at the same time every day, the hottest part of the day when they, they want to sleep. Right, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they drugged them. Yeah, yeah which is a bit they, sad. They but yeah, the, the tiger's head was in my lap and I had a photo taken. And we walked with the tigers and we got to um, feed the baby ones milk. Oh, nice. Yeah, we got to spend right. an hour with the baby cubs. Oh, and that wow. was so cool. They're like little puppies, you know. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, they they bite and play and they're very playful. and. But it, you know. yeah, they're play. They can get dangerous though. Yeah, they can eat your head off. Well, they had that one out here that, that did that, that... Uh, Hit the lady with the with the paw and knocked her out and just messed her up. Yep. And, I and the funny thing is, we know the guy that was he was we know a guy that was doing a documentary was videotaping the same same tiger in the same cage. He was inside the cage taping him like the week before. No way. He goes, "Oh my God, I got to post this," and he posted this clip of him in the cage with the tiger, the same tiger that killed yeah. this lady. And I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> well, it's so sad that they there's so. You know, there's not many of them left natural right. in the world, right. you know. They can't live harmoniously with their native people. Right. <laughs> yeah, we kind of they, moved into their neighborhood. They kill the tigers because the tigers are eating their livestock. So well, at least no... you got to see the tigers. In this yeah, it was, it was totally... Not many people can say I had a tiger take a nap on me. No, not many people can say that. They or they sat on the petition <laughs> and, you know, they... They gave it to charity. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just that. It cost me a lot to get over here. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not like it's just you jump on the on the L train or something and you're there. No. You know? no. <laughs> it's a, you know, a good 24, 25 hours of traveling. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, each way. <laughs> oh. And you lose a day too, don't you? Well, you gain a day and then you lose a day. So it's the same, oh. you know. You, you leave Monday morning and you get here Monday morning. That my, I just blew my mind. We are we are a day in front of you. So if yes. I leave Monday morning, yes. by the time I get here, it's we're Monday. Monday morning. It's Monday morning again. So yeah. We and and the planes are high enough you can see the curvature of the Earth. Never Not quite. Out there to see, I don't know. Look out there. You can tell me. Well, <laughs> generally I don't sit in the windows oh. because I have blood clots in my lungs, and um. I am on blood thinning medication and I need to get up all the time. So you sit in the aisle? Yeah, I sit in the aisle so I don't piss anyone off. Because if, if it was me sitting there and someone was getting up, no. Nah. 
Yeah, I, I usually sit and look out the window, just stare out the window. Oh, you uh, I have done before. When I'm in Paris and England, I've, I've done that. But I've never really seen the curvature of the Earth. That's pretty high. Yeah, that is pretty high. That but be, I know on a lot of the international flights, if, you, if you're going far enough, you yeah. can get up high enough where you can well, actually see I'm it. I'm going to have to get up and have a look out the exit window. Yeah, just tell the old pissy lady next to you, hey, let me look out. <laughs> So you must have a lot of frequent flyer f miles from going back and forth. Well, yeah, I do. I use them quite a lot. <laughs> you don't get much out of frequent right, flyer points, right. though, like, you know, maybe a trip, trip home or something right. um, to Tasmania. But it adds up after a while, though. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can't fly. Can you fly directly into Tasmania? No, God. you got to go to the mainland and then come out. Yeah. Then like last year when I won the Miss Nude Worlds, I went from New York to somewhere in the middle, I can't remember, my brain's a sieve, um, to LA, right. LA to Sydney, Sydney to Melbourne, Melbourne to Tasmania. Because Sydney's on one side and then Melbourne's on the other side, right? You, so you got to jump and then... No, Sydney's or is it... here and Melbourne's there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's an hour and a bit flight. I flunked geometry, or ge oh, <laughs> geometry. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> That's all right. I, I can't speak. To, I don't even know how to spell dyslexic. <laughs> C I uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I stuff up, I'm always yeah. I'm just a dyslexic stripper. So <laughs> shoot me, whatever. And then that's when they stop asking the hard questions. Yeah. You just say, oh, okay. Well, I'm not a stupid dumb stripper. I'm no, but you can play one on TV. <laughs> See, you got the blonde hair, you could play it off. You just say, I'm just, I just strip, I'm just a girl. You know, twirl your hair. Yeah. Yeah. Not and then you pick, pock pick their pocket. I do that. <laughs> this is probably the most dumbest and blondest I've looked in a long time, actually. I'm normally all very, you know, Victoria rolls and hair pinned up in nets and very classic burlesque looking. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it looks a bit deceiving right now. So we caught you on a trampy blonde. Well, I'm in a tracksuit. I mean, that's I perfect. That's perfect. You're comfortable. Really yeah, we've invaded your space here, and you haven't you know, haven't kicked us out yet. I took it out of a ponytail from wearing it in bed yesterday, and that's fine with us. So this is how good my hair looks. Just naturally. that's good. <laughs> See, so you could sell you whatever you put in it. You could sell it right now if you had it. You could say, you know, yeah. if it was yours. Yeah, my yeah. hair. Get my hair. Yeah, yeah. It'd be better than. You know, like on those QVC it's channels. It's horrible to say the truth. <laughs> it's longer than mine, so it's, it's saying something. Yeah, it's supposed to be I'm a girl. I know, I know. So you don't like girls with short hair? I do like girls with short hair. It's got to be the right one though, right? But, yeah, I don't find it very sexy without long hair. Um, but Jessie J, man, she's horrible. Hot, her, like oh my god! You just look at her face, and instead of like looking at all of her, you just fixated on her face. She's mm -hmm. gorgeous. She is. She's yeah, Marley Cyrus looks amazing when she's all done up with her makeup. Right. But when you see like Pavarotti, snap, right, right, it's like yeah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but have you ever talked to Jessie Jane? No, no. She's got a really high pitched voice. Does she? Yes. She can sing pretty high pitched. She's yeah. yeah. She used to work at Hooters. Oh really? Back in the day. She yeah. Used to, she used to train all the Hooters girls. Oh cool. Back in the day before she got into porn. Right. You know, I interviewed her a long time ago, and and she's she is. If you took five Red Bulls and you I downed them. We're talking about a different person. I think so. Then. Talk about the porn star. Talk about the singer. Oh, Jessie J. Jessie J. Oh, okay. She's now got no hair. She's bald. Okay, Jessie yeah. J. I'm she thinking of somebody else. Born star. She's, yeah. she's got hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, damn. <laughs> I know, I know. She's I follow cool. her on Instagram. I have to admit. <laughs> yep, she's pretty hot. So are you on all the, all the social medias and all that good stuff? I certainly am. I have a Facebook page, Cassandra Jane. I also have a profile, Cassandra Jane, but don't bother trying to add me because I don't add strangers. I will refer you to the page. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh, there you go. Politely. Um, 
and I've already, you know, you can only have 5,000 plus friends on in a profile. Um, and it's full, my profile is mainly burlesque performers and producers sure. And, sure. and shows and stuff. Um, and people within the en- adult entertainment industry. I don't need random men asking me. To Just oogling. Yeah. yeah. Will you call me? Yes. Bad. Can I send a picture of my penis to you? Well, I love these new stickers, right? I don't know if you s- oh, switched yeah. on to that. You can get these stickers if you're using on your phone or your iPad. Okay. And there's this one of the face, and he's going... Bleh! And he's just throwing up... Oh, the face. little emoticons. Yeah, yeah. cause stickers. And um, I do get guys sending pictures of their penis quite a lot. I'm glad I don't. I don't know how that <laughs> it disgusts me. I find it quite vulgar and I'm really not... Like, what did you gain out of that? Other than the fact I want to throw up, you know, I'd rather look at a naked lady than a naked man sure. any old day. Sure. That's why we turn the lights off, guys. That's why. Oh my God. That's why. <laughs> so I actually, ha- yeah, my thing now is I send this little sticker that throws up. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is about guys. They think that everybody wants to see their cock. And it's, it's well, like nobody I, does. Sorry. The other weekend I was at a private function, a stag party. I think right. it was a birthday party actually. And um, I have all my music for my shows on my iPhone. Sure. So you just plug it in, off you go. Oh. I've given them my phone, I've gone to get changed, done my show, la da da, in the car with my six year old daughter, oh, and no. the asshole has taken a picture of his cock. Thank God she oh. didn't see it because she's always on my phone. I was like, what the hell? Delete? Oh my God. Oh, no. So bad. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's wrong. Guys, don't do that. Don't do that. But um, I also, yeah, I have an Instagram, which is um, Miss Burlesque World. Oh, okay. That's the name of that one. Right. Couldn't get Cassandra Dane. Someone stole my name. Oh. Um, <laughs> Damn them. And my Twitter account is Cassandra Bijou, B-I-J-O-U, which is Jewel in French. Jewel in French. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Was there anything I forgot to ask? Mm-hmm. I'm getting a no. <laughs> anything, anything you want to add to this? Anything, uh, anything else you want to add? Um, what do I want to add? Um, I mean, we've had a good time, but I don't want to take up your whole night here. No, no, it's okay. Um, I've been enjoying it. Um, I think, like, um, why I've been doing so well the last three years is yeah. because um, I have gone outside of the the, the the box and I've added burlesque and the things I love about striptease, stripper, mm-hmm. um, and the things I like about Parisian and, and Las Vegas, and I've put it all together and I've made it my own and something different. And um, when I come here, particularly here, and compete with these shows that I've been competing with, the response from the crowd and the photographers that go to every single comp and every single meet, da, 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 they are just like, oh, my God, you're just such a fresh of fresh air and just, well, you got to think about it from from our perspective too, and like you know, I I do photograph a lot of stuff, and and we send Curtis up to do the stuff in 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 uh, Wisconsin, and when we run stuff, we can't run the nude stuff, yeah, because we don't have the twenty two fifty sevens, and on top of that, I don't want to mess with the nude stuff, yeah, you know, because it's just it's just too much yeah. trouble for us. Yeah. So when somebody does a complete set that's non nude. That's great for us because yeah. we get three times the shots, yeah. you know. And it's and just it's like more entertaining the, for us. The response from from women in the crowd mm-hmm. and men in the crowd, like, right. oh my god, that was so creative. And I'm just like, this is Bill. It's been going for fucking years, like <laughs> for hundreds of years. Like seriously, people, yeah. Yeah. you know. But you know, clearly they haven't seen it either ever or in a long time. And um, I'm just trying to put the the show back into the show, girl, and right. and take the sexual out of it and make it sexy like it doesn't need to be sexual in australia it's gone from like i i don't get too much work anymore because in in australia unless you are fisting yourself or weeing on somebody you're not going to get booked and i don't do insertion it's not my thing see yeah they don't allow that here so. okay well that's a big thing in australia it has been for a very long right, time right. and um 
you know, once you get past a certain age, the the crowd aren't going to book you because you're old. Unless right. you stick a mobile phone up your vagina and let them <sighs> ring it. Like, the things they do is wrong. They do fruit and veggie shows. They do all these stars. Oh, it's just yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah. So they've taken the class right out of it. Um, and so it's hard for me to get bookings because I don't do any of that. Right, right, at all. right. I am all about class. I'm all about, you know, um, you know, poise and glamour. It's all glamorous for me. <laughs> Nothing says class like a phone and your twat ringing. <laughs> Like there was this one, there was this hold sixty, on, on. there was this sixty-five-year-old. They they called her a stripper, but she wasn't a stripper. She was actually a prostitute because she yeah. would have sex with them. So you can't call her a stripper. She stripped, but she wasn't a stripper. Right. She, she was the first insertion show I ever saw. <laughs> I was twenty-one years old, just new to the industry. I went to Miss Dildo Rama, a competition called Miss Dildo Rama. Oh, my God, they need to have that here. <laughs> that just sounds hilarious. <laughs> I was scarred for life. Anyway, she's come out. She's 65 years old. Yeah, okay. She has been murdered since this. She's passed away. Oh, well, so. that's not good. No, not at all. She's 65 and she's still lactating. She's squeezing milk oh. into the crowd. Oh. Before she came on, half the crowd left because they knew what was going to happen. Oh. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I laughed the whole way. My face never oh been my so. God. Anyway, so she pulls out this praying mantis. Then she pulls out a rubber frog. Then she pulls out all these beads. She's pulling, pulling, pulling. It was like the longest amount of beads you've ever seen oh in your whole God. entire life. Oh then she gets a small one and, and does that. And then she gets a bigger one and does that. And then she gets a fist and she sticks that up there. And then she sticks it up her bum. And then she sticks two carrots up her ass. And then she stuck a zucchini in her vagina. And I'm like... Oh my god, this is so disgusting. I don't understand why people have left. Anyway, then she gets a witch's hat. Oh. <laughs> no one wants to see a, a, an 18 year old stripper do that. Right, right. 65 right. year old. She no, is. No, no, she no. grabs her lips and she sits on it and she fucks a witch's hat. I'm not lying. And this was the first insertion show I've ever seen. It was so disgusting. And I actually have had to perform once after her. They mopped the floor, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I didn't perform where she performed. Okay, okay, no, right, I was right. very, yeah. Um, and the, like, yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't want oh to do God. that. I found that was really wrong. See, she should be doing that at Salem. She should be going to Massachusetts she and go to Salem and do All the football clubs, like all these 16, 17 year old boys have seen oh, yeah. that. Yeah. That's what they see at the football clubs. So when someone like myself, who's pretty and you know, it's all about the glamour and being sexy. Oh, I'm bored. Where's the witch's hat? Exactly. I actually I make the phone ring. Had a witch's hat been thrown at me before? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. They carry their own. Or they throw ping pong balls at you. Oh. I've had that too. So oh. you know, it's it's really hard. Um, also in Australia, the all the 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 places we used to perform, they've all closed down. Right. They um changed the liquor licensing laws from 7,000 a year to 30,000 a year for sexually explicit entertainment. Uh, so it put a big joy kill in it. Right, um, right. And with all the clubs, they don't want to pay you. Yeah. They want yeah. you to work there for peanuts um, and you make your money by them advertising you and you do your lap dances. I don't lap dance. I'm strictly stage. I'm untouchable. Right, right. It's not something that... It's not that I don't like doing it. I can't talk to them because I'm me. Right, right. And I can't turn my personality off to try and make 50 bucks. I just can't do it. You can't go, you want to dance? I can't pretend I like them. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't like you. I don't like you. Right, If I don't right. find you attractive, I'm not going to pretend you're hot and I want to have sex with you. Right, right. <laughs> Some girls can do that and they some girls... Can. And I take my hat off to them, but it's sure. just not my thing. I just can't different thing. Yeah. Different different thing for different people. So, therefore, I don't get booked there either because, you know, they don't want to pay two fifty a show and my arm, like, minimum two shows a night. Sure. Why bother? So, why yeah. bother? Well, stick, you know, stay out here. Come and uh, so entertain us over here. I mean, I, they, you know, I get all these requests and I'm like, I can't. So, I, yeah, I've, I've got to do a court thing first to try and get a passport. 
sure. Once I've done that, you'd be seeing me a lot more. See, well, that's good. I, I want to see. I want to see your routines out here. Oh, yeah. Honestly, you come to well, SoCal. There's not much out here to do that. But. Yeah. Well, everyone's yeah. just like. It's got to be oh, somewhere. I love you, and um, and same with um. Or maybe in Vegas, we'd see you there. Well, Canada, like my my friend Justice, who who just came second the other night in the mm -hmm. Miss New World. She's just like, you've got to come and work with me. They will love you. They will love you. Like, and I was like, really? But I don't know any pole. And they're all about their pole, apparently, the Canadians. Right. I'm like, I don't touch the damn thing. And she's like, nah, they'll love you. <laughs> Canada's a cool place to go. Now, uh, when you do, like, the Grand Prix and stuff, and there's, there's people that are in pole fitness there, do you get any slack from those guys? No, no. Like, I was actually really surprised that um, Moses, who was the judge um, for the pole, mm -hmm. he runs a pole champion competition. Right. Of some right. Miss Pole. I don't know. Do you know? Not off the top Not of my head. Not off the top of my head. Not Sorry, head. Moses. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know. I know I'll get good points from the burlesque one because they know that I'm doing it right. right and I right. knew I was spot on. Um, but didn't think everyone else but Moses was the one that gave me 10 out of 10 both nights nice. and nice. he's a beautiful he's a beautiful soul and he was just like wow you're amazing I love this it's awesome very cool. so very cool. yeah. yeah very cool very cool I I, I, I just night, I got the first standing ovation that ever happened in that club very cool that's not an easy thing yeah. to do because there's been some good talent in there well <laughs> no, I, I'm just wondering because, you know, every once in a while we try to cover some of the, uh, they all have a convention out here for the pole fitness people. Yeah. And because we're associated with the adult industry, they won't let, they won't yeah. even talk to us. They're like, it? they're like, uh, no, we don't want your kind of publicity. Sport thing now. Yeah. It's all about I'm the sport. Like, not, you know, it's like, fuck, you stole it. Bullshit. You bullshit. stole it off us anyways. Pull your head in. That's what yeah. Think. Well. That's they need to get over say, it. Like, you know, the same thing with burlesque and stripping. It's like, well, what do you think? Burlesque is the mother of stripping. Exactly. It's the mother. It's where it came from. Exactly. You know, it is different now, but it's just within the history. It's like the, that little monkey turning into an ape, turning into a human. Burlesque is the little monkey. Well, I mean, burlesque started <laughs> way back in the 20s and stuff. And then, well, I mean, I even before that. Thing. Yeah. Well, the first so-called burlesque routine that's been documented in history would be this dance of the seven veils in the bible that's, that's true there you go a burlesque routine so that's even older <laughs> <Baby C. laughs> yeah yeah well i mean stripping really didn't become stripping until what the late 50s I think well it's late 50s yeah or 60s. yeah well burlesque originally was nothing to do with taking burlesque. right right yeah. Burlesque means um, making fun of. It's an Italian right. word for making fun of. So I believe, from what I can remember of my history lesson, um, it kind of started a little bit of Moulin Rouge, a little bit of belly dance, a little bit of like England, all mixing in together, yes. doing different things, trying different things um, with dancing girls. Mm -hmm. But the vaudeville shows were magicians and um, contortionists and, yes. and circus people and carny and freaks or yes. what they called back then freaks um, so that's kind of where that all you know traveling show um, and I can't remember the name of the lady but she brought her little dancing girls over to America yeah. and the Americans loved it and that's where it started there and they'd put on vaudeville burlesque shows and in between the shows which were normally men Right, there would right. be breaks to move around all the sets. Right. So in between these breaks, they stuck the wives up there and said, take your clothes off and entertain them. And apparently, from what I could be wrong, um, that is some part of how it started. Right, yeah. right. Well, they were, they were fillers in between the comedians and the other yeah, acts. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. were the filler. They were the filler. Right. Yeah. But now burlesque is about taking you know, strip tea. Yeah, well, I mean, even even in the 30s when the mob clubs were becoming popular in some of the states, they'd bring in the singers yeah. and the dancers would be the filler between the singers. Yeah. And they'd do the same thing, but in a in a dinner club environment. Yeah. And so they brought that kind of yeah. up to date with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, totally. So, you know, burlesque really isn't the mother. I suppose you go back to the belly dancer. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Been around a long time. Probably there and 
all the way up. So, yeah, and then, like, in the 60s, the TV came. Oh, yeah. Go-go dancers came. <laughs> Strip clubs opened up and the, the burlesque performers either had to take the knickers off or they didn't get work. And that's yeah. happening now with me. I've got to fuck myself with a vibrator or I don't get work. So it's a vicious cycle that's happened. Well, there's still a lot of people that like the old nostalgic style well, dancing too. The thing, like the burlesque had a revival and it came back and it's been bigger than ever and it's not women dancing for men anymore. Right. It's women stripping for women. More women go to burlesque shows than men. It's probably about that's, 75 that's weird. and 25 ratio. Yeah. Well, that's cool, though. It's but, you know, the, the interesting thing is burlesque actually could be on late night TV. It could be. Yeah, Some it of totally. it. Totally, yeah. yeah. Not all of it. Yeah, not you know. ghoulesque. No, not the ghoulesque with the meat and the meat pussy and all that. No, yeah. that, that's kind of no, weird. No, no. <laughs> and getting tampons out of your butt and stuff. No. Oh, uh, no, no. That's not my no. style. I know. They go. It's about shock. It's all shocking. Shocking eyes. Yeah. So I, I do believe that the, the showgirl, what I, you guys call it feature entertainer, I right. call in Australia, I call it the Australian showgirl. Um, I do believe that, you know, it's, it is a time where it's dying, and I know that it's dying here in, in, in America as well. It's happening all over the world. And I do truly believe that it's going to take the same cycle as, as burlesque and in another 15 20 30 years it will revive itself yep. and it will probably be, it'll be another genre of burlesque like burlesque now you have your classic you have your neo and then there'll be show girl yeah yep. well i mean you think about it we've had strip clubs around since the 60s and they really haven't changed much so there's going to be a big change in that too. So yeah, there's well, got to be you know, some kind of change. We're doing it at home now. In, in their yeah. Room, you know, yeah. Webcam. The internet's stuffed a lot of it up too, I think. Yeah, the internet yeah, screwed everything. Got to go, okay, well, how can I be creative and start entertaining rather than just doing the same boring old thing as everyone else? Poppin'. Poppin's really in and twerking. <laughs> oh, God, no. No twerking. Please. No twerking. No. I don't know. I actually kind of like twerking. I think it was cool, but... A little bit, not right, a whole right, 15 right. minutes of twerking. Right. Now, did you see the girl that caught fire that was twerking on the TV? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll we'll go ahead. <laughs> Please she explain. was, she was, there was a video that, that was on the internet and went viral, and it was this girl that was twerking, and she was standing on her hands in front of the door, yep. like to her apartment, and somebody, her roommate came home and opened the door, and so she fell into the table that there was candles on it. Yeah. It was a glass table. The table breaks and she her, catches her pants on fire. Oh, well, the thing was, that part of the video was released on YouTube and it went viral. Yeah. The thing was, it was Jimmy Kimmel. You, you know, are you familiar with Jimmy Kimmel? No. He's a late night TV guy. No, I didn't mean. They, they made the video and it was a stunt woman. Oh, okay. So they totally, it didn't, it didn't really happen. Yeah. It was a whole fake thing. Yeah. And it, but the, but they didn't re, you know, they didn't tell anybody. Yeah. So they put it on the, and then the late night TV news was showing it. Every channel was showing this right. video. Yes, it was great. So this on the, this we found on the internet. This look at this poor girl. The dangers of twerking next on channel eleven. You know, and, and they would go. This happened after Miley Cyrus twerked. Yes. How funny. Yes. Were they taking the piss out of her? Oh, I know. Oh, they should leave her alone. What do you think about it? What was I doing when I was 22? I was doing the same thing. Exactly. Like Except that was a guy. She's been Montana for like two or three years. Give the poor girl a break. I know. I know. She's just trying to... Oh, she's no. making a name for herself. She's just binding herself. You don't exactly. You yourself to like 30. <laughs> yeah. 35? Wait. It, I think it was 40. 40. I, have, I don't know myself yet. <laughs> I surprise myself every day. There you go. <laughs> I know, like, I surprise myself totally every day. I wasn't going to end in Miss Burlesque again. Well, and then you I did, did, and I won it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, congratulations. I'll ask you again your, your social media so people can find you real My quick. So social we media is Cassandra Jane on Facebook. Cassandra Bijou, B-I-J-O-U, on Twitter. And Miss Burlesque World on Instagram. Well, we thank you so much for taking the time with us and letting us invade your little uh, world here. Little box. Your little box. We were in Cassandra Jane's box. Wait. No, that's a different part of the story. Wait. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, you guys. You guys couldn't come. So. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so for having much. me. <laughs>